and uh, today I'm talking about open source projects and legal issues around it. So most of the things which I'm going to talk about, you might have looked at it in some way or the other. Sometimes you may not have given attention to the whole issue, but let's look at it, uh, you know, uh, from a different perspective and see how what are the risks when you, uh, you know, open source projects generally face and how you can mitigate those risks and what are the community way of looking at uh, the risk and the issues which we face in the open source projects and what are the global best practices when we look at some of the risks and some of the legal issues and how we can avoid all those issues. So when we talk about the legal issues, so first of all, let me say this is not a legal advice. This is an educational effort. It's not because the laws across the globe is different. The corporate law in US and India or Singapore might differ. So it is not a legal advice. But what we I'll be trying to uh, make the attempt is to talk about the best practices globally. So let's look at copyright issues, trademark issues, and patent issues. So as you have now seen, most of these things you would have noticed might not have paid attention to. But so let's start from copyright. So what is a copyright? Basically, generally for a software, you, the, the protection is generally in most of the jurisdictions is through copyright. So is an exclusive legal right to control the rules for copying, modifying, modifying and distributing a book. And who could be a copyright owner? You could be an individual, you could be an association, you could be uh, a foundation, a trust, any outcome. And typically you would have seen, this is an example of a copyright notice. Copyright at the rate C, and the year you have done that, you are a foundation, you should put your foundation's name. If you are an individual, you should put your individual's name. If you are a company, you should put your company's name. So that gives an idea to somebody who is looking at that piece of code, or library or whatever you have done that okay this has been done by this gentleman or this foundation or this individual and all the rights for modification for distribution you should check with and under what license that we will talk about later so this is the indication which gives you like okay this is the person or the foundation or the trust i should talk to for anything I have to do with. And typically, like in India, the copyright right extends to 60 years. The lifetime of the author plus 60 years. It varies in different jurisdictions. But broadly, it is a long uh, drawn uh, protection. So when, when we look at open source projects, you know, irrespective of the you would find that there is a copyright notice. So that provides the information of the rights of the owner and users. So you might be the owner, you might be a user, your rights differ. And uh, what are the rights typically would be understood from the copyright notice? So copyright notice and then the license information. So these are the two most important legal information which I look in for in any open source project. If it is not there, then there is something, an issue there. Because the downstream users will not be able to understand what are his rights. So there are good chances that he or she may not be using your project at all because most of this information is lacking. So you would also look at, uh, you know, different projects have different ways of protecting the copyright. So the contributors license agreement is one way of protecting your uh, you know, copyright information and uh, the developer's certificate of origin is another important legal agreement, uh, you know, which protects the rights. Now let's move on to the trademark issues. So what is a trademark? The trademark is when we say a foundation, this is the origin of this name. So whether it's goods or services, there is a trademark. So, and there is an inferred source, origin, and quality. 
let's say when we say Apache Foundation, there is a quality. We know there is a community working behind it. So what this helps in is to create confusion. So later in the uh, session, I'll be talking about in what all instances we have seen confusion. So the trademark owners have the obligation to protect their mark. It's not the users. Users have to comply with the trademark obligation. So open source projects needs to have trademark and also a trademark policy. So the way you write, you know, let's say Apache Foundation, the way the, uh, 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 the trademark policy will tell you the way Apache Foundation has to be written and how, who can use it, in what instances. So as I told you, it avoids confusion. It gives you a source of origin, quality, and all those things. About IBA, so this one important thing for another every open source project, irrespective of the region you are in. So one example, good example, was the Debian and the Mozilla Foundation issues around the Firefox trademark issue, which started in 2006 and added in February 2016. So for 10 years, this issue was going on. So it's always better when you are having starting a new project, please make sure that you have a proper trademark assigned and you have a trademark policy. So everybody who's using that project uh, knows that this is the way this has to be done. That should be illustrated in your uh, website, in your trademark policy. The other famous instance was when Amazon was sued by Elasticsearch. So there are so many instances across the globe where you know companies, projects have issues. So please safeguard you know your trademark and have a trademark policy. And the best projects across the globe has good trademark and trademark policy. And please search that such names are not used already. The other example is the Java trademark, which is owned by uh, Oracle, but Eclipse Foundation used to use it for a long time. There was a lot of conversation around this, and finally they had to give up. So the unable to convince the Oracle to allow the users of trademark term Java to refer to the open source version of Java Enterprise Edition, the Eclipse Foundation is asking those who care about such things to vote on the open source. So, it's a nice situation after using it, that name. It's like, you know, if somebody tells me you can't use the name Biju after uh, 50 years of my existence in this world. So it is quite difficult. So, and there is a lot of cost. If I have, somebody has to change the project name, there's a lot of confusion it creates. So it's better at the start of the project itself to think about the uh, project name, trademark, copyright, and all these things. Don't put it to a later instance where there's a lot of cost. There's a lot of confusion. So it is the interest of the trademark holder. So let's say I have bought a trademark for my project, open source project. It is my obligation, my or, uh, or interest to safeguard that. So if somebody is misusing my trademark, I should enforce my trademark against them and stop. Um, uh, you know, should not allow them to use that trademark. Because they are deriving, so there will be confusion. People will think that, okay, this is done by Apache Foundation. Let's say if Apache Foundation doesn't enforce their trademark. Then people would think that, okay, this originated from Apache Foundation project. And there could be sometimes cyber security incidents or threats or malware in those projects. Because when I use those projects, I thought that it is from Apache Foundation, but it may not be. So it's very important that you protect if you're a trademark owner you are the foundation of the trust, you should protect and enforce your trademark. Now let's look into the patents aspect. So you will, if you see the preamble of GPL, it says, finally, any program is threatened constantly by software patents. We wish to avoid the danger that redistributors of a free program will individually obtain patent license, in effect, making the program proprietary. To prevent this, we made it clear that any patent must be licensed to everyone, free use or not licensed at all. Now, 
let's look into Apache 2.0. Okay. Clause 6. Grant of patent license. Subject to the terms and conditions of this license, each contributor hereby grants to you a perpetual worldwide, non-exclusive, no, no charge, royalty free, irrevocable, except as stated in this section, patent license to make, have made, use, offer to sell, sell, import, and otherwise transfer the work. Where such license applies only to those patent claims licensable by such contributor that necessarily infringed by the contributors alone or by combination of their contribution with the work to which such contribution was submitted. So basically, the whole free software community doesn't believe in software patents, most of them. But that doesn't stop the patent trolls or operating entities. So the whole open source projects has been threatened at various instances by two types of entities are there an operating entity when i say the word operating entity operating entities are entities which have products and services and then there is another type of entity which is called non-practicing entities non-practicing entities are entities which just buy patents and they don't have any products or services then they start asserting against various entities across the globe so in the recent past, Genome Foundation was sued. So, and one of the main reasons why open source foundations are a good target for uh, patent trolls are uh, for the fundamental reasons that globally these projects are used. And uh, when, when in a typical scenario, in a corporate scenario, when one entity is sued, they have a patent portfolio which they can retaliate using that. But in an open source foundation, because open source foundations don't file for patents generally, they don't have the defensive capacity. So it is very important that open source foundations think of defensive strategies because they don't have patents and they don't file for patents. So they can't have an offensive strategy. So the only way they can look at it is by having a defensive strategy. How as a community, we can come together and protect the community. So in 2019, Genome Foundation was sued by a patent troll called as Rothschild. So when Genome Foundation was sued, they joined the community that is Open Invention Network community. What we did was we gave them prior art. Using that prior art, they went for crowdfunding. Because patent litigation and defense is a very costly affair. So what did uh, they then then for event for invalidation of this patent of Rothschild, which is what Rothschild alleged that Genome Foundation infringed, and that's the patent number. And uh, once the invalidation proceeding started against Rothschild. Rothschild withdrew the case, gave license to all the patents which uh, they had. And this is a statement post this from Rothschild. A priest to announce that the patent dispute between Rothschild patent imaging and you know, have been settled. I'm pleased that they managed to settle this issue amicably. I have always supported innovation of open source software and its developers and and create its innovation and adoption. So, in the first instance, they sued an open source foundation. And later on, they made this statement. And the best part, what happened after this was using, after the settlement, using the prior art which Open Invention Network gave, somebody went and invalidated the patent of Rothschild. So, that is the final conclusion this happened. So, it is very important that the community comes together have a defensive strategy. So one of the biggest community in the defensive strategy is Open Invention Network. Uh, I'll put a disclaimer here. I'm part of Open Invention Network. I represent the Indian region. So what we do at Open Invention Network is, it's the largest community in the world. Anybody can join. You are a project, you are a startup, you are a company. You are an individual developer. Anybody can join the community. This was uh, initiated 16 years back. And today we have companies, startups, and projects. Even Linux Foundation is part of the project uh, community. Anybody can join. They join through an e-license. 
The only obligation you have is that in case you have a Linux platform patent, you will not assert it against any other community member. And the community, other community members also have the same reciprocal pledge. And wherever you are in the world, you can be part of the community. There is no commercials to join the community. And uh, so we have a cross license of 2.0 million uh, total patents. So this uh, ranges from 3,885 software and applications. And uh, some of the uh, uh, protections we provide. So you can see the community members who are part of OI, open source projects globally. Yeah. Not Rothschild. Not Rothschild. Yeah. They, they will be happy to now in, uh, join us. They'll now join us. So the only people who don't join OAN is people who have an intent to be a patent group, who want to assert. So if you see from the composition of the 3,885 software and applications, it looks something like this. So almost all areas of technology is covered, open source technology is covered. So at various times in the past, it was operating entities which behaved like patent rules. In recent times, uh, it is not just operating entities, it is non-practicing entities which are creating whole havoc in the whole ecosystem. So there are various other uh, you know, uh, entities which uh, work on the defensive strategies. So Open Invention Network is the largest among them. So now let's move on to the other open source contacts. So this has uh, various problems because in the whole supply chain of software, how do you ensure open source compliance? Let's say you have vendors across the globe or you have contributors across the globe. How do you ensure that you know, each of them are following the same set of rules? And ensuring that the level of education compliance is the same. So there is a Linux Foundation project called as Open Chain. Open Chain, the objective of Open Source uh, Open Chain is to ensure that in the whole supply chain of software development, there should be compliance. Let's take a scenario where you have contribution. Uh, people contributing from across the globe. How do we put a standard that, okay, this is the benchmark you should do? Because my understanding might be different. My friend's understanding who is contributing from a different region in the world might be different. How do we have the basic, uh, you know, common platform? So that is taken care of by OpenChain. So OpenChain 2.1 specification has now come, become the ISO standard. So you can do a self-certification. You can get a third-party certification. And uh, in fact, there is a security specification which is going to come up. And uh, so all those issues related to license security around open source compliance, because typically, globally, this is one of the biggest problem, like open source compliance. That's the uh, objective of this community. And uh, we have seen that most of the companies globally are hearing and adopting open chain as the standard, whether you are in telecom, whether irrespective of the sector you are in. And uh, that helps to mitigate. And the contribution is not just from one region in the world. The good part is that companies, individuals across the globe, across various domains, are contributing to this project. And we, as we all know, that uh, you know the documentation, license compliance, these are the issues which most of the companies' projects face. So, open chain would be a good answer uh, to all those problems and solutions. You know, provides great solutions also. and. I would be happy if you could uh, look into OpenChain 2.1, our the specifications there. And I'm also looking forward for the security specification. And you would have seen globally, there is a lot of security challenge which OpenSys has faced in the last 10 years. 
uh, which also has some, in certain cases affected uh, the credibility uh, you know, in certain cases. So communities like OpenChain would be a great bet. So I have five minutes more. I think uh, if you have guys have any questions. Um, what's your thoughts on um, banning proxy payments? Like 10 years ago in New Zealand, uh, we were banned from. Yeah, so uh, if you see globally, uh, in US, there is this Alice judgment. But what happens to the existing patents which has already been granted, software patents which have been granted? And sometimes, you know, it's very difficult to uh, decipher between a software patents and, uh, you know, if it is not just a software patent, because uh, the, the, the patent authority there in each region has different standards. So in U.S., of course, the Alice judgment, <clears throat> software patents are, are not allowed. But there has been various instances where software patents has been allowed. So uh, in Europe, software per se is not allowed. Patent per se is not allowed. But if it is in furtherance of that hardware, so that differentiation is very difficult. So somebody has to scrutinize each software uh, application, patent application. And the rules of the game is different in different parts of the world. So maybe in New Zealand, they have stopped software patents. Even in India, software per se cannot be patented. But we have a CRI guidelines, computer related invention guidelines. So if you can pass that guidelines, you get a patent. So the rules of the game is different. So uh, I don't think in the near future you will see software not being granted patents. Yep. Um, so with all the things like co-pilot Yeah, I think uh, OpenChain has not looked into, uh, see, uh, what OpenChain does today is prescribes to the best standard. So for example, uh, if you are a company or a project, you should have an open source policy. So it also includes that you train your team that what is the best practices. You review, uh, uh, confirm to the license requirements, uh, you know, Train them, make them understand because see, generally license information obligations are left out by people. So whether it is a copyright notice, there is a modification notice, uh, all those things has to be looked into, and uh, then only you can be confirmed with OpenChain. So there is 1.1 specification, 1.1, 1, uh, 1, 1.12, and 2.1. So only if you are confirmed with 2.1, that's equal to an ISO standard. So uh, training, uh, compliance, audit, review. So all these processes at least makes some level of compliance. So whether it is uh, open that GPT or anything, this rules of the game are same. So training, compliance, you know, and enforcement. So it doesn't matter if you use yeah. samples as part of yeah. the application of the... So the rules of the games are the same. License compliance is required. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>